Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and a few weeks ago I asked you guys about your least favorite character designs and why you don't like them so that I can try to respond to all of your critiques and create a version that you would like more. Last time I tried this, my video got swiftly demonetized and 18 plus. Uh, that restriction is now lifted, so if you tried to watch the part one before, you can watch it now. Um, sorry about that. And just a quick disclaimer, this is not a fixing video, no disrespect to the original artists. This is just a fun thought experiment, and let's go! So first up, this character was actually requested more than any of the characters I did in the first video when I actually counted it up, so I absolutely had to do her first in this one, and that is Momo from My Hero Academia. The main complaints about her is that she's used for fan service, even though she's a young character and it just feels like awkward and it's just not very good. Um, and a lot of people also say that they just think that her design and her outfit is ugly. <laughs> so we're going to try to address both of those complaints. Now she has some plot armor for um, to, to sort of make an excuse for why she ends up in these fan service situations so often, and that is that her superpower is that she can create objects, um, any non-loving object it seems like, and in order to do that she needs calories and she needs um, access to her skin because it like comes out of her skin and so there's scenarios in the show where she needs to make something and it like explodes her outfit. You know, very predictable fan service, you know, excuse. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm going to try to work with the actual constraints of her power. Um, I'm not going to try to like change any of that. Um, but I'm going to try to create some outfits for her that would allow her to like live a comfortable life and fight, you know, while ha still being protected from the elements and also have access to her power. So my first design idea was what I'm calling the Hot Topic solution, where she basically has a dress and um, it has like a million little paneled areas that have zippers. There's a type of zipper, this is common in like tech wear, um, where you can just pull on it and it like quick releases and it like totally opens up any part of your you know outfit where the zipper is. Um, and in addition to that, I also, because of there was a specific part of the show where she has to make an insulation blanket and explodes out the back of her outfit um, and like ruins her, her uniform. Um, so I actually made a panel that she could pull forward on her hoodie strings and it would pull up sort of like this trap door panel on her back. Um, and would give her full access to her entire back and then it would fall, it would be like weighted along the bottom of this panel. And so when she would let go of it, it would cover her back again so that she's not, you know, getting blown up by villains and stuff and she's more protected. Um, and also, you know, she wouldn't be in a fan service situation for the whole entire show. Um, and then my second solution is more if I had more control over the character, I could change her like personality and the to whole vibe of her, then I would give her um, two sort of flowy uh, like clothing pieces, one of which is like a capelet and one of which is like a skirt. And I would put little weights along the edges so that when she spins, it lifts up and gives her more access to wherever she needs access to. Um, and it would also look cool because then there could be like you know, like a magical girl, like literal excuse for her to be spinning around and, you know, fighting in a sort of like ballet style. I just think it could be really, it could add a lot of like visual difference to the usual like punching and exploding that everybody else is doing. Um, but yeah, this is not really in line with her personality as much. So this is more if, if I could go more off track with her. I really do think the main reason that this character design is rubbing people the wrong way is because I think a lot of people are just really sick of the excuses when it comes to character designs. It, Her boob window has very much the same feeling of like the um, quiet breathes through her skin kind of vibe. Ilulu needs those for her flame sacks or Power Girl needs a boob window because she has no identity and therefore she just left an open space where, you know, Superman and Batman have like you know, logos and stuff. But I digress. I hope you guys enjoy how I switched up her outfit. That's mainly the part of the character design that I think people weren't liking, so I didn't do too much to her hair or her face. Next character design was heavily requested and one I didn't initially expect, um, but when I saw the name popping up, I remembered this controversy from when this movie first came out. Uh, so this character is Sisu the dragon from Raya the Last Dragon. Uh, now I saw this movie once and it didn't leave like a huge impact on me, but I remember that at the time there was a lot of talk about the way that the dragon was designed. Um, a lot of people said that she had same face syndrome with like Elsa and honestly like looking close at it, I 
can kind of see what they mean. Um, her eyes definitely have that quality of sort of like a, a Barbie dog, you know, like, or in a Barbie movie, sometimes there's animals and it kind of looks like a Barbie's eye sticker got slapped onto an animal. It kind of looks like that. Um, I think it's like too much white around the iris, which um, makes it look more human rather than animal and less cute, um, as well as like the, you know, the full on like false eyelashes look and for me the thing that kills me the most is actually the eyebrow for some reason this eyebrow really bothers me it's so blatantly um like human like and not at all like any sort of fuzzy animal um so it makes the fact that her face is covered in fur really weird i don't know i was just getting kind of like a, a cat's flashback um anyway um so sisu is supposed to be a naga um this is a type of dragon from southeast asia and there's various different countries that actually like have stories and statues and stuff about naga and when i was looking them up the first thing i noticed um that stood out the most to me is a that, that the design is very sharp there's a lot of sharp points especially around the snout and a lot of just like yeah like it's more angular whereas sisu is very smooth and soft looking and then um, also the colors like i was seeing these naga statues that had the most amazing color palette like super bright super intricate and at first i was like okay maybe they went like way down on the intricacy of this um, type of, of creature because it's animation and then I remembered it's 3D animation so they can just make a model one time um, or maybe two times if they need you know different versions or something but um, and, and you know it can be as detailed as they want it's not like they're having to draw it every single time so um, it definitely got me thinking about like Book of Life and like how much detail was in the characters for Book of Life and even kind of that like wood texture it almost made me wish that Sisu really looked like a statue <laughs> you know um, but I did digress that's obviously not the direction they wanted to go I do think they definitely could have like bumped up the color palette I also think people part of the reason people think Elsa when they look at Sisu is because of the color palette just being this like icy blue color um, and I think that when you're looking at statues of Naga and also like Southeast Asian art this like icy blue color by itself with like little lavender bits just does not remind me I mean, maybe there's something i'm missing and i'm like totally like ignorant but to me it just doesn't really look like it came from that uh area you know like and it doesn't remind me of the the statues of this mythological creature um so i i really wanted to try to put those super bright super like eye-catching colors on a design of like sisu that's more true to like these naga statues i also of course changed the eyes so it didn't have that like barbie vibe and i changed the eyebrows so that it looked more like little scales um rather than you know a penciled in eyebrow <laughs> from a makeup tutorial or something um and then i did another version of her with the same design design but uh, I stuck to the color palette that they picked I ended up putting some pops of like gold um, just because I was seeing so much gold uh, in statues of Naga uh, even from different countries it seemed like kind of a consistent thing so I thought that would be kind of nice uh, alongside the icy cool colors that they, they picked for Sisu so basically there's two different versions um, one of which is much closer to the one that they picked um, but yeah let me know what you guys think of it Next up is a highly requested um, character, and that is She-Hulk, mainly from the new Disney Plus show that hasn't released yet, but that as soon as it released, its teaser trailer got sort of universally panned for the horrible looking CGI, and many, many people saying that basically she didn't look big enough or muscular enough. Um, there were a lot of different scenes where this was really obvious. Most um, in particular to me, at least, is the scene of her carrying a man um, and his arm is bigger than her leg. Uh, this is kind of an example of that character design trend where um, a monsterized sort of male character will look like almost totally inhuman and then the female version will be like a super hourglassy, conventionally attractive shaped kind of version um, that looks a lot less monstrous. Um, it has very much that kind of vibe. So for my redrawing of She-Hulk, um, I'm basically just going to try to treat her the same as uh, Bruce Banner was treated when he was designed into the Hulk. Um, when you see the Hulk in the Avengers and stuff like that, you know, he's he's noticeably bigger than, uh, say, Thor, who is like an incredibly g godly, muscular, and large man. Um, the Hulk is way beyond that. Like, the Hulk is like a giant, right? Um, so I feel like she needs to just be bigger in general. 
And then on top of her much bigger height, um, I also feel like one of the biggest problems with her, and this is not just in the Disney Plus version, but also in the comics, is that it seems like it's hard for the artist to let go of the idea that like her waist will still be roughly just as skinny as it would have been pre-Hulk. Um, which, if you look up like the strongest women in the world, female like uh, weightlifters and athletes, not bodybuilders necessarily, because that's more cosmetic, but like actual like strong women, like physically strong women, um, oftentimes they are quite a bit wider than a you know like an actress or a model, which makes sense. They do have completely different jobs and <laughs> different things are required of them. So I think that uh, when it comes to the Hulk, who's supernaturally uh, bulked out you know it doesn't make sense for her to have a super like waspish waist like i think she should be generally like wider <laughs> everywhere and i think it's really funny because like i think the reason that um throughout the ages um when people are drawing she hulk they've been really hesitant to go this far is just because i think they think it won't be uh likable or attractive on a woman but uh in the age of lady demetresque and um you know all I want to do is seeing you turn into a giant woman. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel we're, like we're culturally at a stage where a really huge She-Hulk um, would actually be quite popular. And just to be clear, I am aware that in both the comics and probably in the show, there is a canon explanation for why she's not as extreme looking as uh, Bruce Banner's Hulk. Um, and that's because she, rather than like, being dropped into gamma radiation, she just got a blood transfusion from uh, Bruce. But um, I think that's kind of lame, honestly. <laughs> I think that if you're going to make uh, another Hulk character, like toning way down on the Hulk characteristics and the big, um, really like intense parts of that character design is just I don't know I don't know why you would do it so that's uh, my feelings on the matter so that's three more character designs redesigned around your guys' critique. Let me know if there's any others that are really bothering you that you would like to see me take a crack at and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Huge thanks to my wonderful patrons including Katsuki, Noose Milk, Strawberry Andromeda, Raven's Crow, Zocelyn, Winterheart, Harold Bird, Jabber Dabber Doo, Teddy Spaghetti, Gender Was Stolen, For Spookable, Ah, it's Jamal! Kay, Rodrigo, Momok, Kadaria, Night Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, Middle Z, Lily Alert, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsubaki, Michael Lavali, Cutie Pie, Ruin Raincrow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, Your Boy ST, JJ Jade, and of course, Blah 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 Blah.